Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we are in London. No, not London, Ontario, not New London, Illinois. We are in London, England. And today what we have for you are some things you should know before you actually come to London so you can have a better trip. Just some of the basic things for tourists that might be coming here for the first time. So uh, let's get started. Now the first thing you need to know is depending where you're flying from, you could be ending up in one of five airports here in London. If you're coming from the US, usually you're coming into Heathrow or Gatwick. Both easy, you can, they both have an express, Heathrow Express and Gatwick Express, which is more, which is more expensive than the local transport, uh, but it does get you here. Uh, Stansted, if you're flying in with uh, EasyJet or, or Ryanair, the, the cheap airlines, a lot of them go there. EasyJet also goes to Gatwick. Um, and when you're going to come from Stansted, they have also have a Stansted Express. There's a train that comes in, but there's also buses. And all the airports here have a bus that will bring you into town at a significantly lower price than any of the train services, okay? However, they do take significantly longer as well. So that would be one thing I would say. Um, if you're going to be taking these trains in, a lot of times you're going to be coming into another station and you're going to have to take the tube when you go around. And the tube is the metro system here in London, you know, the subway system. It goes everywhere. If you got a pass, man, you can go anywhere you want to go. But the thing you need to know is the tube or the subway, you know, in London is expensive. If you don't have an, what they call an Oyster card, you're going to pay maybe three pounds per ride. Uh, for my American friends, that's about five dollars per subway ride. Yeah, insane expensive. So what you need to do is get an Oyster card. You pay like five or six pounds for it. And what it is, it's a reloadable uh, transport card that you can use on the, the subway, on the tube, or you can use on the buses and things like that. It just kind of ticks off the money. And what happens is if you use the Oyster card, it actually charges you a lower fare. But the thing is, you cannot forget to tap in and tap out with your Oyster card. Because if you don't tap out, they charge you like the whole largest fee they possibly can. And that can be a lot more expensive than just paying three pounds, okay? Now, another thing of the transportation around here is you can take the black cabs around here. I mean, the London cabbies are famous for their wit, their humor, and knowing where every freaking thing is in this town. And that's what's so cool. And the thing is, if you're gonna take a London cab, before you get in, you know, you, you, you look in the window and say, hey, I wanna go to, I wanna go to Soho, or I wanna go to the Parliament. You tell them where you wanna go beforehand, and they say, sure, get in. You hop in, and they'll take you there. And you can ask them questions and all kinds of stuff, and they're usually very helpful. And the cabs can be kind of pricey when you are here, so just be a heads up on that one. They do have Uber and those things here, so you can use that to save money. There's also private cars you can hire to take you places. So if you wanna to go to the airport and stuff like that, um, I will warn you, there are unlicensed cabs here as well, and that's up to you to take them. I recommend taking the black cabs or, or, or doing that. Now, in terms of the <coughs> currency you have here, they use the British pound, okay? And it comes in various denominations, 5, 10, 20, 50, you know, you get the basic ideas, but also they have coins. There's a one pound coin and a two pound coin, and the thing, and there's more smaller coins, you know? And that kind of leads us into something you need to know about money here. London is an expensive vacation destination. Places where you're going to stay, it's going to cost a lot of money. You're going to go out to eat, it's going to cost them a lot of money. Drinking costs a lot of money. Um, and the thing is, you got to watch out because some of the sites as well can be very pricey. St. Paul's or Madame Tussauds, which I don't think is worth the money, just FYI. Um, <coughs> the Tower of London. These things can really add up, but what's cool is here in London, they have tons of free stuff you can see, like, you know, going to see the Parliament from outside or going to the British Museum to see the the the, uh, the sarcophagus from the Egyptians or, or going to see the stuff from Greece. I mean, there's some, the Rosetta Stone. There's so many fantastic things at the British Museum and the Tate and the Tate Monitor, the National Gallery. There's all kinds of really cool free stuff to do around town that you don't have to spend a lot of money when you are here but just know if you do go to a paid place like you know um westminster abbey which is really cool and well worth it you will pay quite a bit all right now with the money you might say where should i exchange my money just bring your atm card from from your home make sure you let your bank in the u.s or your home country know that you're going to be in england so therefore they know that oh this card's in england they'll let you take out money because in general, when you use your debit card from your local bank, it usually gives you a lower, like a better exchange rate and less fees. Because if I take money out with my normal Visa card, well, they might add a 3% charge onto that and another charge here and there. And the bank here might have a charge. So your best bet is 
your ATM debit card from your home bank, just let them know before you go. And also, ATMs are all over London, so you can get money anywhere, it's not a problem. And they do accept credit cards pretty much everywhere, so it's like the US that way, that you don't really need to get money because you can always pay with plastic. <laughs> so that's helpful. Sometimes you don't, do need some cash though, so have a few, a few bills on hand or some coins on hand because they are worth something. Now, probably the most dangerous thing about London is the traffic because they drive on the left side of the road here so you know if you're in the US or Germany you look left then right and then left and then you cross the street well here you need to look right and then left and then right because the cars are coming from the, on the, the other direction and that's where a lot of tourists actually do get hurt I actually every time I've come here and I've been here a lot of times I still have catch myself a couple times going whoa I didn't look right first so make sure you look right left right otherwise so be careful for that other safety concerns you would have here, London is kind of a pickpocket place. It's not as bad as some of the other major cities in Europe, but you do need to pay attention at big tourist sites. Um, <coughs> late night, we do, they do like to have their drink here, so that might make some people feel uncomfortable. But overall, London's a really cool place. It's not really too problematic with safety and things like that, so you shouldn't worry too much. Just watch out for the cars and the buses on the street, because that's where most of the tourists get hurt. Now another thing you might want to do is you're going to take a lot of pictures here because there's so many cool sights in London, whether you're taking a boat tour on the Thames or you're up on the, in the gallery up at the very top of St. Paul's or, or of course Big Ben Parliament kids, you're going to take a lot of pictures, your phone's going to get low on battery, you might want to know is how are the plugs here? Now in the US you know we have the two flat plugs like this and then in, in mainland Europe they have the two circle plugs like this. Here in England they have a different one. There's three flat things, two this way and then one up on top like that. And the thing is, when you buy an international converter, make sure you get one that works in multiple countries because if you do that, it will almost always have the UK, Europe, and the US, and that'll take care of you just fine. That's what I bring with me. Now, another thing you might notice about this video here in, in London is, it's not raining. No, it does not rain all the time in London, but it does rain a lot. So make sure if you're coming, Make sure you bring like a jacket or, or a, a poncho, if you will, something small you can take with you. I have, a, I have a sweatshirt actually with me to wear because it can rain out of nowhere when you are here. I've been here a lot of times. I remember we were for New Year's one year and literally I felt like it was raining horizontally, okay? So when it rains, it can really rain. And most likely when you are here, it will have a rain here and there. So make sure you do bring some you know, waterproof shoes and you know, some kind of waterproof jacket just, to, just in case. But the thing is, when it's nice weather here, the people go out, they have their beers outside of the pub and they're eating outside. You see this, well, there's not so many people now outside, but there were a ton of people in this park when I got here a little while ago. And they really enjoy being outside when they can be outside. So make sure if you get that chance, do go out and enjoy things. Don't just sit inside the pub when it's nice out. Get out, because then you'll get to meet the people. And that's one thing about London. People think, oh, London, England, it's Downton Abbey and all stuffy and the Queen will say hi to me all the time. No. London is an international city. You will hear Chinese, you will hear Spanish, you will hear Italian, you will hear English, you will hear Scottish, you will hear all kinds of stuff. And that's what makes this city, this city so cool, is it's really like integration of all these places throughout the world here in Europe. And that's what's cool. It's like a New York with all the different, you know, people and all the different nations and all the different religions, and all the different, you know, people. And it's a really cool thing. And that adds to the feel of London. So when you go to different sections of town, you can really feel it. You know, you don't just go to Piccadilly Circus to see the one statue and the, and the things and Leicester Square to see the pictures. You go to Chinatown to have really good Chinese food. Or you're going to the West End to see a show with actors from all over the world that you've seen in movies and all kinds of stuff. And this international feel of London really is one of the coolest things about it. That's why a lot of people move here to work because you can be from anywhere and still be a Londoner. So it's really kind of a cool thing. And the last thing I want to say is, what are you going to eat when you're here? Look, I know England doesn't have the greatest reputation for food. I mean, no one would say, I'm going to England for a culinary vacation. <sighs> Look. You can hit up the pubs or the chippies and stuff like that and get your, your really English food like your fish and chips and your steak and kidney pie or, or if you're here on a Sunday, the Sunday roast oh, with Yorkshire pudding. There's all kinds of great English things you can do in the pubs. But what's cool is, like I was talking about before with Chinatown, the Chinese food, you have so many different nationalities here and they've brought their cuisines from all over the world and you can eat great here, whatever it is you want. 
I spent 15 years living in Europe and whenever I missed America and I wanted to have some like more international food, I would come here for great American food, great Mexican food, great Chinese food, all kinds of stuff. And that's what's cool about London. You can eat and drink so well. Anyway, I hope this helps you to prepare for coming to London. If you want to learn more, five things you love and hate about visiting London, uh, 10 things that will shock you about London, some don'ts about visiting London, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I think you get the point. And we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions, and we hope you have a great time here in London, because I know you will. Bye.